Hello everybody. My name is Asif Mahmood and I'm from Jeju National University, South Korea. The book that I've chosen to present in this presentation is Network Function Virtualization Concepts and Applicability in 5G Networks. The chapter's name is Network Function Virtualization. So before going into fur further details, I feel the necessity to provide a background what NFV is, what STN and VNF means. So network function virtualization is solely here for the purpose to virtualize the network environment that was in on the physical hardware or infrastructure before but right now a lot of standardizing bodies such as HC and OPNFV are working on to virtualize the networks and the virtual network functions which are actual network functions that run on a virtual network function environment and together with NFV and STN we can provide a strong environment by the property of STN that is a separation of a control plane from the data plane so it allows the STN or the op network operators to work on cheaper devices Network function virtualization. What are the goals? To find cheaper and efficient ways to connect subscriber devices to their networks. So that's there. This is the goal for network function virtualization. How goals can be achieved? So using the concepts of STN, mobile edge computing, and 5G network slicing. What are the benefits that we can get from each of these technologies, such as STN, edge computing, network slicing? STN separates the control plane from the data plane which allows the freedom of hardware dependency and edge computing which provides computing services near to the subscribers and devices allowing us to reduce the latency of the network services provided by a network operator and network slicing as everybody is aware that it is the slicing of network resources through which we can provide different quality of service to a different group of users based on its application or based on, based on the criticality of the use case of a traffic type. So we can achieve cheap, uh, get cheaper devices, distributed services and faster resource provisioning by combining all of the concepts into NFV. It is the representation of significant transformation for telecommunication service provider networks. NFE goals are to reduce the cost, in increase flexibility, and personalize services. How? By integrating different techniques involved in STM cloud and orchestration. Orchestration is the provisioning of resources uh, from the very scratch step of configuration, deployment, and running them. So, this part of the NFV architecture is the most important one which is called orchestration and how can we achieve it uh, how can we make it more efficient intelligent it is because we are moving on the virtual network environment using NFV architecture so whenever the things are going towards virtualization it means that we can automate the processes make them efficient or design algorithms or use different factors such as hardware factors, the processing capabilities, the bandwidth. So depending on the usage of the resources, we can automatically scale up or scale down the resources. And all these examples that I've given are a part of orchestration. So this is what, how the network function arch virtualization architecture looks like. First of all, there is OSS PSS, which is the customer site applications or portals through which the customers are given care. Like if a customer has a complaint regarding his service from the uh, network operator A or B, he goes to the customer care center and these customer care centers have OSS BSS applications to which they can solve the problem of a specific customer and it is a traditional network uh, traditional 
mechanism to solve the problems of a user or subscriber and these two parts the mono and these two uh, VNF layer and NFVI layer and mono layer these layers are the new ones which give which provide flexibility in the virtual network environment so let's talk about the orchestrator this is the one that has multiple VNF managers or VNFM connected to it that uh, lie within the domain of the orchestrator so this is the one who can see different domain virtual network functions it has a network function catalog and network service catalog over here through which it can get the state or uh, different factors involved in the network regarding that are connected to it so this is this can see the overall information related to the network through its catalog and different stores that it maintains it can directly communicate with the vim which is actually the cloud manager or an stn controller so uh, before going into much details of the vim i need i feel the necessity to explain what vnfm and ems are because uh, it is a very confusing point for the new learners that vnf managers are for the management of a virtual network functions not the network functionalities like i can give an example that if a virtual machine has two cores assigned to it so for the next uh, cycle of decision or um, if the orchestrator needs to define that this vnf needs more resources so what uh, what role comes in for the vnf manager is that it can scale up or down the resource core capabilities the number of rams assigned to it or the hard disk capabilities or uh, other fact other hardware resources that it needs so this is the job of a vnf manager or uh, one more thing that it is responsible for it like creating the virtual machines creating containers creating whatever kind of resources is the responsibility of a vnf manager and what comes in the virtual machines or virtual resources is the code that is the virtual network function functionality and the functionality maintenance of functionality is done through the ems that is the element management system elementary management system for the vnf so the difference is clear now that vnf manager is responsible for the life cycle of a virtual machine or a virtual resource or different virtual resources but the element management system is responsible for running the functionality inside the virtual network function instead of the virtual machine resources so uh, i can give an example of a router so for example vnf n or vnf2 is a router functionality has a router functionality running in it and if there is some problem in the router that it is not forwarding the packets uh, correctly or uh, it is uh, like doing something wrong so the element management system will be responsible to create another instance of a virtual uh, create the uh, or solve the problem of a, a router uh, rather than the vnfm so that's the main difference between the ems and the vnfm so going towards the next layer or to the bottom layer uh, this is a virtual infrastructure manager that is uh, denoted as vim or uh, usually called vim so here comes the cloud controllers which are responsible to create virtual machines or create the virtual networks uh, this could be cloud controllers stn controllers container uh, container controllers such as kubernetes or other engines such as docker so this is where those controllers lie uh, as i've earlier told that vnf manager is uh, 
module that is responsible to create virtual machines delete virtual machines create the resources for the virtual uh, virtual network functions but uh, it is the one who decides or manages the life cycle but the actual work like creating virtual machines is done by a cloud controller or the networks that are created are managed or by the STN controller those are not the part of a VNF manager those are the part of a VIM virtualized infrastructure manager so moving towards the NFVI layer can be seen that the resources are split up using a virtualization layer and the resources could be compute related to computing related to storage related to network so how are these resources split it up into uh, virtual chunks like if we have computing resources of uh, 16 cores or uh, we have like a hardware of 200,000 uh, or gigabytes or you can say 200 terabytes so what we can do is create different virtual machines uh, having different size and that 200 terabyte could be split up into multiple virtual machines and these virtual machines can be standalone machines and the network provided between the virtual machines could be provided by the VIM uh, in that case it the most of the cases it is STN controller who creates the network virtual networks in between the virtual machines so this virtualization layer is provided uh, by the cloud or uh, STN controller actually these manage those virtualization layer services inside the NFVI layer so this part the VIM has some of its services running on the actual infrastructure which are usually called the compute nodes so the networks are split up using those distributed services on a on the net infrastructure layer so there are a lot of virtualization layers for the virtual computing we can think of a nova service and for creating a virtual networks we can think of a obs and that is open virtual switch so by combining all uh, all the concepts together the goals of NFVR to reduce the upgrading cost as we can see that everything is on the virtual environment we can upgrade or we can scale up the resources very easily without the intervention of a developer or a engineer uh, we can once just develop an algorithm or develop an intelligent system which can automatically decide the decisions and flexibility uh, it is obvious that the flexibility is increased here using this architecture but uh, we can design different algorithms apply different mechanisms he over uh, VNFM or orchestrator or we can develop our own cloud services so this architecture overall provides a flexible environment and it is increased so the same point it provides innovation so there are a lot of implementations that can be improved as the source code can be open source or it can be closed source in the case of an open source code it can the algorithms or the techniques or the softwares or the virtual network functions could be open source so it can bring innovation in the field of networks that was not that easy in the traditional networking te uh, techniques uh, in that case the networks were uh, network functions were on the physical plane so now that we have the virtual network functions in the form of virtual machines or in the form of containers so we can innovate them easily this is just an example of what are the benefits and how can we use these NFV in 5G so it is a push 
it is predicted that there would be 50 billion internet connected devices these type of devices have a wide range of mobile phones robots tractors smart tv sensors wearable devices so all of these virtual devices or the virtual um, sensor representations on the 5g network uh, could be created on the nfp environment or architecture so these are the use cases that we can think in the field for the future so this is an example of a load balancing in the case of a physical machine based load balancing and a vm based load balancing think like there are six users who are sending requests to a server one and two that are on the physical layer so physical machines so this load balancer what it does is splits up the number of requests and sends it to server one and two equally distributed so that the load is divided and in the same in the case of a vm uh, it also does the same but the different difference is that if number of requests in, get increasing on the load balancer it's difficult to scale up the servers like if you want uh, if there is a need of a server number three it will be difficult to configure another server it will require physical effort and the maintenance will be expensive the automation uh, point of view is that these are load balancing techniques are vendor specific so if we want to automate it like automate the process of uh, increasing the number of servers or we want different servers to be configured and so that is a problem in that case it cannot be automated because the APIs that are needed to configure the load balancer are very vendor specific so in the case of a VM it's really easy like in the NFE architecture you can just create a virtual machine and attach it to the load balancer so it's kind of uh, it has turned kind of generic um, approach and the number of resources could be on the cloud anywhere so we are not restricted by the hardware resources the VM could can be could be put on the network anywhere on the cloud so cloud resources benefits can be achieved here in the case of a load balancing so here we see that SDN OpenFlow lacks the intelligence to make decisions based on OSI layers 5 to 7 not able to deliver higher level services provided by load balancers and firewalls so one solution is to decompose the VNFs into smaller functional units so that we may be able to dynamically orchestrate them on the edge that is NFP so this is the example of a decomposed router service what services can be a part of a router or L2 bridging VNFC L3 a DHCP server for sending an IP R protocol OSPF BGP for uh, inter-domain communication and network address translation and IP security so all of these services are decomposed uh, rather than creating a one service of a router so this allows us to orchestrate the resources easily because uh, as I've told that there is an element management system that is responsible to manage the functionality or manage the life cycle of the functionality of a virtual network function so if we have the router services split up or decomposed into much more services such as we can see here so it will be easily easy to orchestrate them and easy to recover the network services the process would be more uh, fault tolerant so it is a highly agile routing instructions that redirect that direct network packets through a sequence of VNFs is called SFC. The SFC is a service function chaining. So this was just a background of what I presented and this is the table of contents, NFE architecture, use cases, challenges, orchestration, how the network functions are modeled, how the VNFs are placed, 
and summary of the whole chapter. So first of all, going towards the NFE architecture. This is just an example. Like HC is working on the NFE architecture, standardizing it and decoupling of network function software from the hardware NFE will facilitate a faster pace of innovations result in shorter service deployment cycles NFE covers a wide spectrum of medieval boxes such as firewalls and NFE covers a wide spectrum of network nodes such as SGW, PGW, MME in the case of a mobility management entity that is a, these services are from the LTE architecture this is a virtualized evolved packet core so this page presents the types of VNFs like edge devices, gateway functions, so NGN signaling, application optimization, performance improvement, service insurance, mobile network equipment, security functions. NFP architecture in com cloud computing stacks. The objective of NFE is to separate the software that defines the VNF from hardware and generic software that creates a generic hosting network functions virtualization infrastructure which executes the VNF. So here we can see that VNF maps to the software service layer and NFVI maps to the infrastructure layer and the hardware layer. So as we know that there are three types of cloud services there are three types of cloud services that we can provide or the vendor can provide so what software as a service is that like uh, you can think of an, uh, like a google drive that you can choose the software as a service and if you are using a tool that is provided online to develop applications so it is that type of cloud is a platform as a service or if you're using a database it means that you're using platform as a service in the case of mysql infrastructure as a service if you are being provided uh, infrastructure as a service it means that you can create virtual machines you can create uh, virtual networks uh, so the example of infrastructure as a service is OpenStack. If OpenStack is installed, it provides you the ability to create virtual machines, create networks among them, and deploy your code inside the VM. The lower you go on this type of service, cloud service, the more control you gain over the hardware and the more innovation you can bring. So the best cloud service is infrastructure as a service in which you can develop your own frameworks your own softwares so the lower you go you get more benefits so this is the hc nfp reference architecture which i explained in the previous uh, slide this is again the same reference architecture in which OSS, PSS, Orchestrator, VNF Managers, Element Management Systems, Virtual Network Functions, VIM Virtualized Infrastructure Manager, and the NFPI layer in which, uh, which is the actual compute resource or compute machines where the actual physical hardware lies and we decompose into, into virtual resources using a virtualization layer and most of the time these virtualization layers software uh, is the part as the is the sub part of a virtual infrastructure manager services so these services are split up as agents inside the virtual uh, in the compute infrastructure so this way we can virtualize or slice the virtual resources NFEI provides the technology technology platform with common execution platform for a variety of VNFs. It consists of distributed set of NFEI nodes, various locations to support the locality and latency requirements of the different use cases. NFEI is categorized into three domains: compute, storage, 
hypervisor infra infrastructure network so what it refers to is that we can split up the compute resources into virtual computing resources storage resources into virtual resource re storages the virtual networks into virtual networks so there is a virtualization layer which splits up these resources and for each type of a virtual resource such as storage compute or network there needs to be a specific agent for each of the each type of the resource to be split up the compute domain refers to the computing hardware hypervisor domains includes both virtual computing and virtualization layer the infrastructure network domain refers to the virtual networks as well as the network hardware examples are cisco nfe infrastructure ericsson and vmware in kvm so what nfe orchestrator is that is a part of nfe mono orchestration as i've earlier explained that it manages the vnf managers directly or indirectly so it handles the network wide orchestration and management of nfe resources that lie in different domains of vnf manager orchestrator can be connected to multiple vnf managers so it is the one who can see all of the domain all of the network functions that lie in different domains of VNF manager and one domain is specific to a sp one VNF manager. So it is an integral is an essential part of the NFE infrastructure NFE framework and is specified within the general specification NFE management and network orchestration. MANO stands for management and network orchestration. On the other hand, it is used to realize the NFE service topology of NFPI. So this orchestrator gives us the whole eagle eye view for the NFVI topology that the services are running on a infrastructure and where are they present and the orchestrator can manage all of the resources running on different infrastructures all over the world on different clouds that are managed by different STM controllers and different cloud controllers. So this architecture overall provides a very flexible environment in which we can innovate, progress and improve a lot in the future. So VNF managers it is responsible for VNF lifecycle management, including VNF creation, resource allocation, migration, and termination. It is responsible for managing the virtual network, virtual machines, resources such as CPU, signing them, and creating the virtual machines, migrating the virtual machines, or deleting the virtual machines, while the virtual infrastructure managers that comes in the lower layer here is responsible for controlling and managing the compute storage and network resources so it as I've earlier explained that there are several agents that lie on the virtualization layer such as hypervisor or an OVS in the case of uh, networking these agents are installed on the infrastructure and the management of those agents is done by a VIM that is virtual infrastructure manager so it is the one that is responsible to allocate the resources through a cloud controller or an STM controller what OS is, is it can be thought of a use case that traditional cellular networks infrastructure the main role of its supporting the comprehensive management and operation functions it is also termed as software component that enables a service provider to monitor control analyze and manage the services on its network so for example if a customer comes to the 
customer care center and complains that the internet doesn't work so what it will do is that the vendor or the vendor employees will request a service status through OSS APIs these are the applications that provide APIs and using different mechanisms it can rather uh, either activate or deactivate the service depending on the billing or it can inform the user that why your internet isn't working or they can troubleshoot the problem and inform the user about the reason why his internet is not working so this is what the purpose what is the purpose of OSS and BSS mm, the BSS is mostly concerned with the activities like ordering billing support the element management system it is responsible to manage the life cycle of failures of functionality rather than creating the virtual machines or migrating them or deleting them EMS is responsible to manage the functionality of a VNF so it notifies the VNF manager to take some actions which are further forwarded to the orchestrator to take necessary and intelligent action as the orchestrator has the information of all the domains in the form of network function descriptor or network function descriptor catalogs lying in a range of different VNFMs connected to it the orchestrator is the one who decides which action needs to be taken in all of the network domains connected to this NFV architecture so let's talk about the NFV use cases and examples so NFV use cases in this book are very into nine sections NFV infrastructure as a service the first four, four ones are related to the cloud computing use cases the fifth and sixth are related to mobile computing the seventh one is related to data center and eighth ninth is related to residential and access networks respectively so NFV I as a service as it is obvious that infrastructure is being provided as a service field of network function so different due, due to different geographical distributions it needs the cost reduction benefits to be implemented so there is need for operators to run their network functional infrastructure that belongs to service providers so if a service provider wants to provide a service in Europe a US carrier can choose to deploy its VNF on European network service providers NFVI it's really easy easy VNF as a service, purchasing and maintaining their own dedicated network service appliances may be too expensive for the small enterprises. So NFV allows them to purchase functions whenever or wherever needed as pay as use model. So NFV modeling is discussed in the next section. Virtual network platform as a service. Service provider today already provides various virtual net private network services to their customers, enterprises need to deploy virtual network to connect their remote offices and employees in a seamless manner with NFV the virtual network platform includes not only the routing and switching gear but also various network functions which can provide additional security and quality of service to the enterprise network so we can develop platforms on the virtual network environment which provide service to different users such as they can create routing and switching platforms on which the their different clients can develop their own routing and switching algorithms mm, this will bring a lot of innovation in routing and switching techniques because they would not be specific to a vendor so uh, this is one of the mm, most uh, likely benefit in the future so VNF forwarding graph refers to a pipeline of VNFs that traffic should traverse through. So it is also known as SFC. Like here we can see that the network traffic is going through VNF1, then directly going to VNF3, and the blue one is traffic is passing through 
VNF1 and VNF3 but it is uh, going through the VL3 so the VL2 is related to control traffic this is related to user traffic so the difference between control traffic and user traffic is that this is the traffic which is passed to our network services that is a part of the controlling mechanism while the user traffic that is like a video streaming traffic or browsing traffic is related to user traffic or it is also often termed as data plane traffic so different type of traffics are traversed through different virtual network functions and that is what SFC goals for so that uh, the draw for the path is referred as VNF forwarding draw for VNF forwarding path forwarding graph this graph is termed as VNF forwarding graph 1 for VNF forwarding graph 2 so it is the same concept virtualization of mobile core network and IMS mobile core network needs resources elasticity to accommodate unforeseen demand surge or unpredicted failures for example when disaster occurs the mobile core network faces tremendously increasing calls with reduced resources so it should be elastic enough to increase or decrease the number of resources example is netflix so virtualizing the core network facilita facilitates such, uh, facilities such as epc or ip multimedia system and increase the capacity of a mobile core network dynamically virtualization of mobile base stations virtualization of radio access networks has been proposed and drawn significant attention as the radio access network consumes a lot of energy and the number of signaling is done most of the times on the daytime when the traffic is more but at night time it is also on so sometimes the traffic is in increased and sometimes the traffic is not that much so the electricity and power consumption is still the same so we need to efficiently manage the resources being provisioned on the radio access network especially the signaling mechanism so if NFV is used or implemented uh, for the radio access network area it would save a lot of resources on which multiple service providers can share the same physical resource so that the coverage and resource utilization are both increased virtualization of home environment the first example that comes into my mind is that as the debugging is challenging as the end users do not have the expertise and knowledge to perform troubleshooting typical network services in a home environment include parental control dpd packet inspection firewall so with nfe the gateway can be simplified and can be made as a forwarding device while other complex functionalities such as firewall configuration parental control so can be moved on to the data center so this will help to reduce the operational overhead and ease management ease the management tasks content delivery delivery networks like the host massive amount of objects range ring from web to video in a distributed manner the demand of scd and storage can increase drastically with the content popularity such as flash trout the popular programs live streaming can put large pressure on the both of the cdn and the network so the problem here is that cdns are more and more tightly integrated with the service providers network given the letters wide geographic distribution and SLA provided so virtualizing the CDN nodes and deploying them in the cloud can provide resource elasticity as demand changes so content delivery network sometimes has a huge number of traffic and is tightly integrated with the service provider network so using the NFV uh, using NFV as a use case here in this field it can 
this provide the resource elasticity attribute in it and we can use the resources more efficiently and provision the resources according to the need fixed access network functions virtualization the main fixed line access network technologies today are based on digital subscriber line so uh, this is mostly used in Asian countries so these technologies require a dedicated electric system to be deployed on the street close to a home so it is strictly so these devices are usually expensive and they need to be deployed near the street uh, home street and it is an expensive way and it needs to tolerate all sorts of extreme environmental conditions so access network functions virtualization can greatly simplify these remote devices and move the core controlling functionality towards cloud using NFV architecture as a use case so the NFV challenges there are a lot of NFV challenges carrier grade properties like telecom service providers have high requirements on the performance scalability fault tolerance and security so efficiency for example the SLA may specify the average delay bandwidth and availability for all the services provided to one customer scalability in terms of the ability to offer a first customer selection of network functions like SFC could potentially lead to creation of new offerings and hence new ways for operators to monetize their networks the platform should abide the NFV reliability requirements service availability as defined by the NFV refers to end-to-end -end service availability that includes all the elements in the end-to-end -end service VNFs and infrastructure components elasticity building on top of the virtualization technology and an NFV platform should be able to leverage the benefit of running instances in the cloud multiplexing and dynamic scaling for multiplexing it allows the same network function instance to serve multiple end users in order to maximize the resource utilization of the network function so dynamic scaling when the demand changes the network operators should be able to dynamically increase increase the number of resources and it should support these policies such as subscriber based application based device based operator specific so there are a lot of different types of policies that rely on subscriber factors application factors device factors or operator specific factors openness Aligned with the open, open NFP strategy in the HP NFP business unit, the NFP framework should be capable of accommodating a wide range of network functions in a non-intrusive manner. It should support open source based and standard solutions as much as possible. Like if the VNF manager is able to deploy or configure multiple type of network functions which are open source or closed source some network operator vendors don't want the source code of their virtual network functions to be leaked out so the nfv needs to be designed in such a way that it should support open source based as well as standard solutions which are private to specific to a vendor so mm, it should take care of the openness or where the openness is not required both cases it means that the network functions should be implemented deployed and managed by the operators enterprises or third-party software vendors so moving on towards that point uh, nfv orchestration topic 3.4 according to hc's mono working group mono contains three key components nfv orchestrator vnf manager VIM so this is the part where the mono module lies like NFV orchestrator VNF manager and virtualized infrastructure manager orchestrator can be connected to multiple VNF managers and how does it 
manage all of the infrastructure and VIM, VNF manager and element management system. It has a network service catalog, a VNF catalog, NFP instances and NFPI resources information with it. So it is the one who is responsible to orchestrate all of the resources within different domains of VNFMs which are indirectly are responsible to their own roles such as element management system which manage the functionality inside a virtual network function and element management system could be responsible to manage a single VNF or multiple VNFs it depends on the case and VIMs are responsible to create the virtual machines cloud resources to assign the different number of resources or the S in the case of STN controller it is responsible to create virtual networks on the NFP infrastructure layer through the use of different agents installed and configured on the infrastructure in network field we use the term compute infrastructure in the case of a cloud resource NFP orchestrator it handles the entire life cycle of a new network service including resource allocation validation and authorization these are the three responsibilities allocation validation and authorization while the VNFM handles the life cycle of each VNF instance responsibilities include registering a new network service in the catalog in the form of NS catalog or a VNF catalog onboarding the network service instantiating the network service scaling up or down managing VNF forwarding graphs related to the network services and finally terminating the service so all of these responsibilities are catered by the NFP orchestrator which manages the information in the form of catalogs whether they are network service catalogs VNF catalogs or the instances information or the resources of the infrastructure infrastructure network function virtualization infrastructure and how does it instruct all of these uh, requirements in the form of these vocabulary is through the interface between the VNF manager and it also has an in interface connected to the virtual infrastructure manager manager that is VIM that is not shown in this diagram but it was shown in the previous diagram you can refer to it so VNF manager is responsible to manage the life cycle of a VNF the tasks include configuration of the virtual network function the preparation and running the virtual machines and setting up the operating system and setting up the necessary packages that need to be installed on a virtual machine on a virtual network or setting up the environment for a virtual network function code where it needs to be deployed the monitoring part is also uh, the responsibility of a VNF manager and it is a part of MANU so on behalf of the VNFs it monitors the VNFs and takes different actions according to the situation. VIM it controls and manages the NFVI components. So, like I've told that VIM is a cloud controller or a STN controller. Cloud controller can be OpenStack or Kubernetes in the case of containers. And for compute resources, it manages the physical resources and virtual resources, for example, servers, VMs, CPUs, memories, for networking, network devices, links, routing, or addressing quality of services. NFE orchestrator orchestration author discusses two interesting problems in the NFE orchestration area. First one is NFE performance characterization, and the second one after is NFE performance improvements. So first we characterize the performance of NFE and on what factors and then we try to solve those problems by suggesting some improvement techniques of to improve the performance of NFE before deploying VNF to a production network 
The service provider needs to extensively test and validate the VNFs given the higher requirement on availability and performance. So what NFV architecture is responsible for is to orchestrate the resources. So when it needs to deploy and orchestrate the resources, it needs a surety that this piece of code or this piece of configuration has been validated and tested prior to de the deployment. So there is no way for a service provider to prevent or detect the performance degradation caused by third party VNFs. So the parameters such as process architecture, clock rate, memory channel speed, memory latency, bandwidth of interprocessor buses have strong impact on performance of the specific application or VNF running on that hardware. So as we have moved the network functions onto the cloud infrastructure, so we are not sure about the performance of different type of hardware. So uh, these kind of these kind of mechanisms should be defined in order to resolve the problems of performance as there are a lot of variety of hardwares available in different parts of the world but the performance is different and it needs to be predetermined that which kind of hardware is feasible for the deployment and correct for performing the functionality of uh, virtual network functions as the different type of service providers require different performance. NFV performance characterization. Different VNFs may have different requirements on the compute and network resources. While firewalls are bounded by the network throughput, others such as load balancer may be bounded by network and compute for session state management. It means only providing additional CPU to an IO bound VNF is not helpful. It's obvious. One difficulty is that there is a large number of configuration knobs and hardware settings, for example, CPU pinning, C states, and memory interleaving. All of them are available in the NFV deployments. We should develop efficient search algorithms for this. This type of performance characterization tool can significantly improve the onboarding process. Different virtualization technologies such as Intel DBDK, SRIOV, virtualization technology D. Are configured depending on the scenarios. Tests are done with different VM placement and configurations. VMs may be deployed on the same host or across host. Both have different impact on the real performance. So finally, to reveal the actual performance that one will experience in the real network, we need to test the different network traffic, not only using plain dummy traffic to test throughput, but also application aware traffic. So all of these keeping all of these factors, it's really hard to characterize the NFP performance because the characterization is based on such factors which are very different and diverse in nature in different infrastructures. So it is very important part of characterizing the performance before deploying the code of NFP architecture. So this is the diagram which informs about the virtualization templates that are that force the performance that and on the basis of which the performance and characterization and analysis measurements are done and VFN workload generator which generate the workload of a virtual function net virtual network function and Another is that the throughput and load monitoring requirements are um, fetched from this characterization and these are given to the different modules of NFV architecture and according to the different uh, decisions made by the NFV modules uh, we can characterize the performance of NFV. So in NFE environments, monolithic complex network functions running on specialized hardware are decomposed into smaller functional units and dynamically orchestrated on, on, onto a virtualized cloud and edge infrastructure. These network functions include both control plane processing and data plane processing and are encapsulated in a VM as a VNF. Um, VNF. So NFE infrastructure enables efficient and dynamic service chaining. 
while the NFE transformation in the form of power efficient compute nodes software on chips that are integrated with large stores of fast persistent memory and custom high speed interconnects these computing architectures are expected to impose unprecedented scale bandwidth and latency requirements on the future data center networks so this example is next generation memory interconnect which can improve the performance for the nfp or infrastructure so the fifth point of this chapter is nf modeling that how the modeling of a network function can be done in order to generalize or make or define a standard of a model for a network function to be deployed configured tested which is compliant such that different type of vendors could deploy their network management functions to test them easily to comply on the policies defined and uh, interoperability between different vendors is possible so taking care of these fact uh, these requirements is must in nfp because if you don't take care about these requirements the nf network function could work on a specific domain but it's not pos it would not be possible to use the network function as a general network function which could communicate with different domains network functions uh, in the different part of the world so network management functions need accurate models of network functions to ensure correctness and reliability NFP architecture each network function is viewed as a black box that processes traffic and these network functions are de developed by diverse vendors and deployed in richer scenarios the box view of network function has already hindered its more advanced application and development NFP operators cannot troubleshoot if they are misbehaving and cannot verify network wide policy compliance such as reachability knowing network functions behavior can also help monitor the policy compliance by generating meaningful testing traces so here we can see that nf models connect nfv applications and nfv implementations here is the network function implementation and here are the network function virtualization applications which are managing the models such as testing verification traffic engineering so there are different types of models for network functions which are based on automata which depends on the state of a network function and boolean logic as everybody is aware that it works on the basis of zeros or one if this and if then based on the logic of if and then and there as another type of modeling technique like nf language which could define a language which is designed to define a model such as protobuf in the case of defining a model in the case of m code so nf modeling these models fall into two categories the first category aims to build models used for network management tasks example given is testing traffic engineering and migration so if we talk about the high level box view it its operations include nf boot up migration suspension and destruction so we can test these functionalities before moving on to the deployment and production environment so this kind of modeling provides us a way that we can predefine the tests and pre-test them before the deployment as uh, before deploying the code we need to be sure about the resource availability and performance so the second one focuses on improving the network function software so including its performance reliability and robustness the first category is 
for the network management tasks and the second modeling technique is based on improving the network function software rather than its management so there are two aspects to see the nf modeling so let's see how these work modeling types this section contains different types of modeling techniques and their analysis so first one is source code based modeling second one is black box modeling third one is modeling application which is based on software so this type of modeling leverages the advances in code analysis techniques this analysis automatically generates an abstract packet forwarding model this analysis methods are forward or as follows which is program slicing symbolic execution and if state analysis so program slicing what it is is useful for programming program debugging parallelization and integration so example of such a system is inter procedure slicing and system dependency analysis symbolic execution this technique is good for small network functions it substitutes one or several program variables by symbolic values inside a code and as the program runs whenever a branch instruction is met branch instruction is met the program is forked like if there are two possibilities like if there is a check like if and else so that kind of instruction is branch instructions like if a, it has two possibilities so the program is forked into two branches and the test is performed on both of the branches so this kind of technique is used for those cases in the case of testing so at the end of a path execution concrete values or symbolic variables are computed according to the path constraints nf state analysis this technique tries to identify the variables on the basis of which nf state depends so identifying the variables is very important in this case so all of these three types of analysis are implemented in source code based monitoring uh, modeling so modeling example uh, we take an example of a layer 4 load balancer in the case of nf source code modeling to illustrate how the above techniques can be used to synthesize the network function models here we use round robin algorithm and define an ethernet port and the ip and the application port so let's see how it works so this is just an example of a code so i would not go into the detail of the text let's see about the code like here there is a if check and an else check so first it detects the packet that is coming from client to server and if it is the packet from server to client it doesn't need to be load balanced so this is the returning traffic so the if case that starts from here to here is the one which needs to be load balanced because the traffic is coming from client to server so it has a further if and else statement this if and this else like if the connection is new it assigns a uh, server to it and balances the load and in the case of else if it is an existing connection it transfers the traffic towards the same server in the case of an existing connection or an existing client so how it works is like it incre increments number one to the idx round robin index and takes the mode and the number of servers and assigns a specific server so if there are two servers so the first connection will be forwarded to the first server the second connection will be forwarded to the second servers and the third one will be forwarded to the first server second server so every time the number of connections is increased the traffic is forwarded to a different server like uh, as i've told that if there are two servers first connection traffic will go to server one the third will go to server number three fifth will go to server number one so the odd number of connections will go to 
server number one and the equal uh, or even number of connections will go to the server number two so this is how it works it is based on the source code monitoring so here we adopt an open flow like model with stateful data plane extension each table describes the packet processing logic under certain configuration c1 in the figure the match is executed on the flows and states the action not only forwards packets but also triggers state transition like here in the case that if this flow is matched and the state of the network function is this so after it should take action of forwarding this flow to s1 so and it also updates the state of the network function to by calling this function of upd update by passing the flow and the state one so this is the mechanism through which the stateful data plane ex extension works model extraction view in this approach we assume that the source code of network function program is known and propose a modeling framework called lancet it how it works is it first conducts backward slicing from the packet output function to get packet slice and from the state variable assignment statements to get slate slice. It then symb symbolically executes the union of both slices and get multiple execution paths for scalability we need to constrain the value of some variable. So at the final point each path is filled into a stateful match action table like the one shown before here and as a row unconditional statements about the packets states are put into flow state fields of match column and inter intersection of an execution path with packet state slice is put into flow state fields of action column this model is only useful if and if the source code is known but this model is not useful when the network function code is private in the case of a specific network operator which doesn't want to leak the code so in this cases this model extraction view is not beneficial but if it is open source it can bring innovativeness and bring a reliable network function as it is open source and it is innovative so here is the program that is sliced into different slices first one would be the packet slice and the second one would be the chunk of code which determines the state of the slice and then we combine the packet slice and state slice again into a program that is defines two execution paths like i've told earlier in the previous modeling technique that if there is a if and else case it can have two execution paths so if there are more checks and more directions of the code so most cases it is on it has only two execution paths so it is uh, it defines two execution paths by defining two different uh, variables like uh, if there is variable of a uh, boolean variable if in the case of true it would go uh, run the first execution path and if it has uh, the boolean value false so in that case the second execution path will be executed so this way we can test the execution uh, all of the execution paths that come into a program and we can validate the functionality of a network function before deploying it into the nfp architecture so this <coughs> approach gives us a possibility of predetermining the test cases and checking them to validate the virtual network function so again there is a match and action table like if the flow um, matches and the state is this one so it should apply this flow as an action and the state of that table or the network function should move on by calling this function that was 
explained in the previous slide as a function upt by passing the flow and the state so we have boolean logic implemented here we have the automata implemented here and we also have the yeah we have the automata boolean logic and network function language implemented here so combining all of the flavors together we are able to model the nf efficiently and it is useful when the code is open source in the course of a private source code we need a black box modeling technique so because the nf vendors may not be able to may not be willing to share source code so this approach is faithful like you're not assuming anything inside the network function you just give some inputs and run and simulate them and observe the behavior of the output of a network function so this is a long process to test the network function that is private but it should be implemented to bring privacy to the network operators as well so it's really important because if everything in the network function becomes open source so what's the point uh, even a single person would be able to hack into the system of a network operator so this is not acceptable in the case of network operators so this kind of modeling technique is very necessary is very much necessary in nfe first challenge relates to complex configuration of network functions the more it is complex the more it is difficult to test the black box model of a network function second even if we are given the configuration the space of possible packet sequences and packet header combinations can be very large because we don't know the source code of a network function in this case so the nf actions can be complex and diverse so this one is more important than the previous technique of modeling network functions just take an example that if we use the black box modeling tool to model a stateful firewall and get results if the firewall is configured with an accept rule between a trusted zone and untrusted zone it allows an outgoing sync to punch a hole and all of the following incoming outgoing traffic of the flow is allowed without outgoing and sync all traffic is dropped so if the firewall is configured with a deny deny rule all the traffic is simply dropped so in the case we test different inputs and determine the output of a black box so we can predetermine or define some cases if you are defining a stateful firewall modeling applications is the third one with an accurate nf model several nf applications can be designed and developed we list example applications which are network function program generation stateful network function stateful network verification network policy composition we use examples of intrusion detection system and a load balancer to illustrate the modeling process and ids is configured with a list of denied flows and flows not in the list are allowed by default yeah and ids has no output in packing states a load balancer forwards new flows to one of the packing servers pointed by an internal state and the state increased circularly for each new flow to generate a determined finite automata one needs to decide the state space and state transition each entry in the model can express a state transition as follows like if the system is in the state s and this flow is matched so we forward the packet take the action in other terms we take the action for this flow that is on state s 
the action is performed and further we give command to the system to transit the state into a different state and we need to define this function that after executing the flow that f on the state s in what state do we need to move the network function to so that's what transit function defines so the sixth point is vnf placement vnf placement problem entails choosing where to place instances of a vnf on server in a physical network in order to accommodate the traffic for a set of service chains so in this case placement factors could be the performance the number of bandwidth maximum bandwidth allowed because on different parts of the world there are different physical infrastructure deployed so in order to deploy the virtual network function on a feasible environment depending on the requirement of a service provider we need to take care of all these parameters or factors a few examples of vnfs are firewall services ids caches and proxies each service chain is a stream of network packets flowing through a sequence of vnfs at a certain rate in the vnf placement problem one must place instances of each vnf on servers and choose a route for each service chain in such a way that physical network can accommodate the traffic for all service chains or if not all can be accommodated on the highest priority service chains server heterogeneity must be taken into account like different servers have different processing capabilities example can be taken of an intel processor or mips architecture based processor so each of them perform different have different capabilities vnf placement is a challenging combinatorial problem because it involves a large number of discrete placement decisions yes because if you want to get different flavors so you need to tackle all the ingredients very efficiently to provide a best solution there are multiple objectives when placing vnfs a service provider may want to host vnfs on as few servers as possible in order to maximize minimize the operation operating costs and leaving open servers for future vnf needs yes, this is also one requirement at the same time he may want to ensure low network latency for his customers these two objectives are in direct conflict like if a service provider is hosting all the virtual network functions on a few servers let's say two servers so the operating cost will decrease eventually but at the same time the network latency like if the traffic grows so few servers could only handle a few number of requests so the network latency can increase so if we increase the operating cost uh, if you try to decrease the operating cost so the network latency will increase or in other words if we try to increase the try to decrease the network latency the operating cost will increase so these are directly in conflict and we need to take care con in cases of concentrated traffic in the network and to avoid network con congestion so this is a serious problem so vnf placement technique is uh, one of it is mixed integer programming this model that explicitly captures the effect of a network traffic on latency while maintaining a linear model we minimize the maximum utilization over resources in the network minimizing the worst case utilization avoids the situation in which a small number of congested resources induce outside delays on network traffic so first of all the input is given to a heuristic method that provides a heuristic solution and provides an optimized solution so input is provided to the optimization method and 
The author overcomes this challenge by having a two-step process. Round-robin heuristic solution, MIP algorithm, it balances the two objectives of the network latency and uh, minimizing the number of servers that we talked in the previous slides like here the problem is that every service provider wants to deploy the DNFs on a few servers and it also wants to decrease the network latency so for that purpose the MIP algorithm uh, balances the two objectives or we can say that it tries to trade off between the two factors and provides the best solution using this diagram so this solution provides a series of solutions along efficient frontier of max resource utilization and number of machines used and expected latency computation so it also tries to decrease the latency by providing a series of solutions along efficient frontier of expected latency and number of machines used so by combining the result of the decreasing number by using the fewer number of servers and increase in decreasing the network latency and observing all of the solutions in both cases like max utilization and expected latency it provides a result to user that which uh, solutions do you want like it will provide a pair of results that if you want this much congestion latency requirement if you want to decrease this much congestion latency you would have this much number of servers and in both cases it provides with a user with different results so the user can select different type of results in each case so the beta is the weighted combination of two metrics that was defined in the previous slide so by observing this algorithm the set of all nodes in the network service servers and switches the set of VNF types is LCN, C is the set of service chains, beta is either 0 or 1, the weight factor, and a parameter representing the relative weight between two metrics machine mentioned above. So decision variables are like, describe the assignment of a VNF instance to leaf nodes, or we can map service chain to one or more paths in the network, volume of flow for each chain along each of its path, rate of traffic into each node performance metrics associated with the solution so here you can see that xpl belongs to 0 or 1 it indicates whether an instance of vnf type b is placed on a leaf or not so if it's 0 it means it should not be on the leaf node and if it is on 1 it should be on the leaf node in the architecture so YCIL belongs to 0 or 1 is a fraction of traffic for the ith function in service chain C, C is the service chain and I is the function that is being iterated and it should be served by the leaf node or not it depends on the value of 0 or 1 so in the same case ZCIPL is a fraction of traffic going from ith node to the I plus 1 node function in the service chain C that travels from leaf node K to leaf node L so by defining or combining all of the combinations of these values we can um, provide the user with different type of solutions which a user can select at the end so by using this kind of mechanism or um, designing an algorithm which decides where to place the VNFM we can provide the user with different combinations of solutions which the user can select them manually or he can place the VNFM using a specific algorithm that has been designed by the NFV virtual network function or the management system services on the NFV architecture so 
The objectives of this model is to minimize the weighted combination of the number of nodes utilized and the maximum utilization over all nodes in the network. So this is the overall equation that if we have 0 or 1 uh, of the weight factor that we uh, calculate using the round robin algorithm uh, explained in the previous slide that if beta is 1 the objective reduces the minimizing and maximize maximum utilization over all nodes in the network this choice of objective has the effect of distributing the traffic as uniformly as possible in order to reduce the highest utilization over all nodes so if we put beta 0 it means that this factor is not uh, equated to zero, 0 so this p factor matters and in the case of beta is equal to 1 this factor becomes 0 so so in either case in both cases either this factor is considered or this factor is considered so the weight factor depends on this factor or this factor not on the both of the factors because uh, either one will be calculated both of them cannot be considered if beta is 0 it means that this factor is turned into 0 and only this is considered and that is p and in the case of beta is equal to 1 this factor is converted to 0 and this factor is considered to assign the weight and that is equal to w so in the ca later case the objective becomes minimizing and the total number of nodes used to host so we have a placement that minimizes the number of VNF stands to concentrate the traffic in part of a network leaving other network resources unused so if we are using beta uh, greater value of beta so we are increasing this and decreasing this and if we are decreasing beta it means that we are in increasing this and decreasing this so this is a kind of trade-off between the weight factor for the increasing the number of servers or decreasing the network latency so we define uh, we define a trade-off between these two factors using this equation so this solution yields a set of solutions that represent different trade-offs between performance and server usage performance is the network latency and the server usage is that if the service provider wants to deploy its vnf on few servers or if he wants to deploy it on more number of servers it means that he will get less network latency and if he increases the performance if he wants to decrease the performance like he can uh, ignore the network latency so in that case he'll, his VNFs will be deployed on a fewer number of services so these are indirectly proportional and the indirectly proportional trade-off is made using this equation by the beta factor so the overall summary we introduce the NFV overview first we first present the NFE architecture proposed by HC and its relationship with cloud computing. We then present its use cases in telecom network. We discuss the challenges in virtualizing the network functions and using them in telecom network. Finally, we further explain the difficulties, problems in deploying NFE in reality in terms of measurements, characterization and modeling. Thank you very much. And if there were some topics in the presentation that uh, I wanted to elaborate but if someone doesn't understand the L2 breaching so for that purpose I included this slide to uh, read this article to get more information related to L2 breaching and if someone wants to read more about OSS API just uh, go through this slide and if somebody wants to read more about VDCL very high digital subscriber line 2 or FTTP which is fiber to the premises so you can go through this slide and for the heuristic solutions you can read this slide 
and Intel DPDK information is given here. The SR IOV is also given here, and virtualization technology is also given here. Thank you.